Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome to class. I'm so glad you could all be here. Um, you have come to English for Academic Purposes. This is English 140, English for Academic Purposes. Um, it's a high level class for English uh, learners. And we just learn English together by looking at different structures and um, going over exercises and vocab and all different things. Um, so it looks like Julio, it's your first time, so I'm just going to call you out and say welcome, so glad you're here, um, hope you keep coming back. This class goes every Tuesday and Thursday at um, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, I am in Spokane, Washington, USA, and um, it is uh, 2.30 here in the afternoon, uh, depending on where you are in the world. Hello, hi Vivek, good to see you. Um, and uh, it's, so it's the afternoon here, it's kind of a rainy day. It's actually not too nice outside, it was really cold. I had to get my sweater because I was, I was freezing. Um, but we, uh, we still are, are teaching English from our studio. Um, if you ever want more information about um, Smart Live, uh, I directed you to this website um, which I'll put in the background here, um, right there, Smart Live. So this has more information about becoming a premium men member. Um, as a premium member, you get uh, extra, extra things that are pretty cool. Um, you can do one-on-one -on -one hangouts with me. I'll go over papers with you if you're writing papers, for example. Um, you get two one-hour lessons per week with either a Canadian or American teacher, depending on your class. Um, I am American. And uh, you have access to this course on Smart English. So you have access to all of the curricula. Um, for example, if I go to smart.me, um, I can see all of these lessons that are so cool. There's a big library. Um, you have access to English 100 all the way to 140. So you get seven different levels of English, or excuse me, six different levels of English. And then there's a bunch of other cool classes that I just like. There's English for Business Administration, Computer, Computing and Information Systems, Automotive, Health Sciences. I used to work in the medical field and I helped build this class. Um, you can see there by the Spokane College of English Language, pretty cool stuff. Um, if you want to learn more about my college and my city and where I work, you can go to usa-english.com. Um, and this is, this is my college, this is my city. Um, I'm the director of the college here, but I also teach these classes. I love to teach. I will never stop teaching because it's so much fun. This is the beautiful uh, city I live in. This is about two minutes walk, that photo you just saw. It's about two minutes walk from exactly where I'm sitting right now. So it's, it's pretty awesome, pretty amazing. Um, and we have uh, lots of partnerships with universities. If you come study here and you want to study at an American university afterwards, um, you can. And it's, it's just a really cool town. It's a lot of fun. I like it a lot. So again, check out usa-english.com if you want to know more about my, my college and my city. Where I live, um, go to the uh, smartenglish.com slash smart slash live if you want to know how to become a premium subscriber. So once again, you get these two-hour lessons, which everybody gets, of course. It's open for free. But you will get access to the course so you can see the lessons and, and look at them anytime you want on your own computer. Um, but you also get teacher marked assignments. So I look at your assignments and I correct them for you and I send them back with comments and video messages. Um, you also have quizzes and exams to test yourself and see um, what your English ability is and where you can improve, and then I can help you improve that. So if you need more reading practice, um, the test will show that, the exam, and then I can help you with your um, areas of improvement so we can make them stronger. If you need more help writing, I'm happy to help with that. Um, just uh, become a premium subscriber and you can get one-on-one -on -one, um, professional native speaker, teacher corrections and feedback. So it's really cool, check it out. And in the end, you'll get official Smart English certification, which is cool. 
Um, so that's enough about that for now. If you guys have questions, you can always email me. Uh, my email is uh, joshua.live at smartenglish.com and I'll put that up on the screen later on for you. Uh, so I'm just gonna check and take attendance here and see who is in class. Um, all right, so Rosa, of course you're here. I don't think you've missed one class. Good job, thank you for that. Um, and let's see, Tsering, looks like you're logged in. Um, if you're in the chat, go ahead and say what's up. Say hello. Um, Jasleen, you are here. Uh, if somebody is in the chat but not logged into Smart, go ahead and say hi. Um, let me know you're here. That way I can I can mark you as present for um, attendance. And I'll go ahead and just take this. I can always add you if um, if I missed you here. So for our premium users, I'm taking attendance and I will get uh, get back to you on any homework or feedback. Um, and we have some special things for you at the end. So, um, going back to our lesson here, we went through last week, uh, we went into unit two, and we did note taking, um, and we talked about some of the vocabulary words that we were using um, in our um, medical terminology sort of environment. We talked about cloning and stem cells. Um, and that was a great conversation. You guys are awesome. Um, let me see here. Uh, oh, let's see. Julio, you're in Texas. Wow. Hopefully it's warmer there than here. Um, it's really rainy and cold in Spokane, Washington right now. So we're all staying inside in our sweaters and just enjoying the, the warm weather. Um, trying to uh, get comfortable here. So yes, Rosa, cloning and stem cells. So just to open the discussion for today, um, what do you guys remember about cloning and stem cells and some of the vocabulary words we talked about? Because there were, there were a lot of big academic vocabulary words. And I'm gonna quiz you on a few of them as we get going, just sort of informally, to see if you remember what the words mean. Um, so let's just start with the easy ones. Uh, Santos, hello, how are you? Welcome to class. Uh, what does cloning mean? Give me a good definition for cloning and try to use a good English sentence to describe the meaning of the word cloning. For example, cloning means blah, 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 blah. Um, tell me what you think cloning means and uh, I'd like to see your definition there. Also, stem cells. What are stem cells? And uh, we're going to be talking about these vocabulary words more, so I'd like you to answer those two questions in the chat while I bring up um, some of our lesson here. Let's see. Um, this is the one that we went over last time, our listening. Um, and I'll quiz you on some of these words. So what do we got? Chat, let's see. Uh, what is cloning? Let's remind everybody. And for Julio, who's new here, Julio, do you know what cloning is? If you know what the word means, go ahead and write an answer there in the chat and we can talk about it. Um, also, what are stem cells? What are those? What do they do? What are stem cells? So go ahead and uh, um, come up with your definitions there, answer them for me, and then we will um, keep talking about this and then kind of move on from there to our new topics, okay? All right, Kyle, uh, it's like the act of copying a cell. Yes, you're right, cloning is like copying a cell, but it's copying all the cells, all the DNA in an organism, right? It's making a, yeah, Julio, Dolly, the sheep, uh, making a complete copy of a living thing. So they made a complete copy of Dolly, the living, um, the first like mammal that was cloned, I think. Um, so it was an exact copy of the sheep, Dolly. Um, all right, and cloning means to make an identical copy. Nava, good job, yes, that's right. Especially of a living thing, a living organism, right? It's the first animal clone, I think. Julio, you're right, yeah, first mammal cloned. Um, 
All right, so some of these words. I'm just going to pick out a few words that I think are sometimes a little difficult to describe, and I'm going to ask you to describe them. So um, I'm going to start with the word indicates. Indicates. What does the word indicates mean? What does that word mean? What do we think? Come up with a definition. Rosa, um, as always, you have a great answer there. Cloning is creating a plant or animal that has the same characteristics from the thing it is produced from. Yes, exactly, and it's identical. The DNA, the, um, the biological marker that is unique, is identical in the clone. It's exactly the same. Um, showing something, Vivek, that's your, your definition for indicates, and I would agree with you, yes. Showing something indicates. So whenever I'm in a classroom here in Spokane and, and my students uh, have trouble learning the word indicate, um, usually one student in the room will know the definition and I'll say, okay, someone please, um, using your, your hand, indicate where the door is. And they'll point, they'll indicate. Um, when you're driving a car and you put on, casually we call it a blinker. It's the little light that goes right? And it, it shows which direction you're going to turn. Um, the slang word is blinker, blinker. Um, but the maybe more academic word would be turn signal indicator, turn signal indicator, something that indicates. It shows which way. To make something clear, yes, to indicate. Um, Usually, Rosa, it's, it's even more than make something clear. It's make your plan clear or more commonly direction or location. So if I indicate where the door is, I am, I'm pointing, I'm indicating where the door is. I'm showing you location. Um, if you go to a big mall, sometimes it'll have a map with a little star on it and it will say you are here. That indicates your location. So indicate is usually tied to cause or location or um, it's to focus in on, on one point. All right, so very good. Uh, new word here. How would you describe mature? Mature. Um, that's a word that we talked about a lot last week. Julio, new guy, any guesses? What does mature mean? What does mature mean? Um, or anybody else that can answer. Uh, let's see who gets a good definition there um, quickest. And then the other word I want to talk about is series. Series. What does series mean? So either of those words, please give me a um, definition in the chat. Julio says turn sign indicators. Is it correct? Um, turn signal if you're in a car. We'd say turn signal and I'll write that for you. Lucas, hello. Superman, what's up? Good to have you here. Um, all right, so, so Julio, we would say turn signal indicators um, to, to mean the lights that blink with the cars. Uh, Fatima, precise for mature. Is that your, your meaning for mature? Not quite, not exactly precise. What does it mean? Uh, Rosa says mature means to grow up mentally or physically. I'd say that's a good definition, yes. To grow up mentally or physically, to mature. Um, and when we grow up mentally, it's usually to act mature, right? Um, not to act like a child. Good job. He matured when he turns 18 years old. Careful of your, your um, uh, tenses there, Vivek. He matured, past tense, right? Um, when he turns, when he turns is present tense. So you don't want to mix tenses. You could say he matured when he turned ED, 18 years old. But otherwise, awesome sentence. Thank you. Selma, cloning is transferring the DNA from an adult cell to an egg after taking DNA the latter out of it. That's very good. Did you find your definition online though? It looks really perfect, like it came copy-paste. Did you copy-paste? Be honest. Um, but you are right. That is the information we're looking for, so good job. Whenever I ask you for definitions, this is for the whole class, everybody, um, I, I want you to try to do it from your mind. Um, I mean, I know we have all this, oh no, okay, Selma, it's long, you probably just took your time 
and wrote it really well. So good job. That's awesome. Um, but it's a good point for me to uh, make here, um, just since I thought of it. If I ask for a definition or the meaning of a word, I hope everybody pulls it from their mind. Um, I tell my students in my classes all the time that the best way to practice and learn English is to see what we have up here. Like, see what you can keep up here. And even if you can't remember, that's okay. Sometimes we have to practice a word or a grammar point um, many times before it sticks. I know I have to do that. So um, please, when I ask for definitions or anything else, try to create something from your mind. So good job. And no, Julio, it's not cheating. We're all here just to learn English. So there's lots of different ways to learn English. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I want us to test ourselves, to challenge ourselves, to see what English we have stored up here and what we can remember from last week. So that's why we'll sometimes review some of the words that we, we go over. Uh, Luciano, hello, how are you? Uh, welcome. Fatima, dangerous equals serious. Yes, um, that is true, serious, serious. But this word here, if you're looking at this one, series, series, different than serious. Similar sounding words, but we have serious, which is like really dangerous maybe. Um, we have series, which is slightly different. What is a series? I know you're not cheating, Selma. Um, good job, and thank you everyone for the, the chat, the questions. Um, and the comments, you guys are doing great. Thank you so much, it's wonderful. Um, series means things that follow each other. Yes, you're right, Selma. Or, uh, sorry, Rosa. You're right. Um, in fact, in America, when we talk about television, we talk about different series. Because who here likes Netflix, right? Lots of good shows. I watch Narcos and I watch, um, I watch Dexter and Breaking Bad and all these other cool shows on Netflix. Um, but we call them different series because um, there's one show after the other, right? Uh, for example, I also watch Game of Thrones. Awesome show. Uh, really gruesome and gory, but it's, it's addicting. Um, so I'm waiting for the new season to start. So we call them seasons, but we call the whole thing, all of the episodes, a series. We call it a series. Um, it's divided into part. Yes, good. Um, it's a part, it's a series, one thing after the other. So like Grey's Anatomy, Rosa, you watch, that's awesome. And that would actually be a very good show to watch for this class because a lot of the academic words we talk about are related to Chinese and Western medicine. So very good. Two and a Half Men, Lucas, you're a fan of that? That's a funny show, yep, like that one too. Um, lots of episodes and seasons. So we understand series. Um, back on topic, I'm gonna refocus us off Netflix and back into English here. Um, so those are some of the vocabulary words we reviewed and then we did our listening. Um, for our premium subscribers, you guys have access to this still. You can listen to it anytime you want. And um, among other lessons, you have access to the exercise. If you haven't got your corrected homework yet, it's because I'm spending time on it, making you guys some awesome response videos, and I'll get those to you soon. Um, for now though, I'm gonna go ahead and move us on to our um, next lessons. Now, I'm pretty sure we talked about everything in note-taking skills that we could possibly talk about so far. We talked about um, shorthand, like symbols, and acronyms, and um, uh, abbreviations, how to write down the words quickly, omit words like articles and conjunctions sometimes, just use symbols like the plus sign or ampersand. Um, so what I'd like to do now is I would like to um, to practice taking some notes and then kind of um, see if we remember a lot of those strategies and skills. And you might ask yourself, why are we spending so much time on note taking? because note-taking is a great way to focus on the fundamental elements of English that you will need in a job or if you choose to go to university. Because if you're taking notes, it's because someone is speaking, someone is presenting to you in some way, right? 
Um, so you're practicing listening skills. As you write your notes, you're practicing writing skills, getting effective information down. Um, and you're also practicing things like paraphrasing or summarizing information. So those are two words that I think are very important in writing and in note taking. Um, and uh, don't worry about mistakes, Rosa, you say mistakes. Mistakes are great. I love mistakes. Do you know why I love mistakes? Because they are the only way we improve. If we don't make mistakes, we can't get better. So seriously and genuinely, I love mistakes. So um, if we find mistakes in your work that you turned in, um, then that's great. We have areas where we can improve. If it's already perfect, we can't get any better, right? So um, I hope you have mistakes. It'll be awesome. Uh, okay, so what is the difference or who can define for me the words paraphrase and summarize. These are two, um, two elements of writing, uh, English writing, that I think are very important in academics. They are different though, and some students think that they are the same thing, but they are not. They are not the same thing at all. So um, please, give me a definition for those. Um, I'm going to give you guys just a couple minutes while I prepare some of the other lesson. So stick around. Um, I'm going to make myself disappear. And I will be back in just a minute. But I'd like for you guys to um, go ahead and define for me paraphrase and summarize, okay? Thank you. 
Okay, so you guys are doing great. Um, I didn't quite get the answer I was looking for yet, though. Um, you guys made a lot of good points. Everybody very much understands what paraphrasing is. Paraphrasing is taking the same information, but using your own words and your own style of writing um, to make it, uh, to deliver the same information without losing any information or without changing the meaning, but just using different words and grammar structure to say it. Um, so that's perfect. Uh, let's see. Um, Rosa, good. We do want to mention sources so it's not plagiarism. That's very important in academics. I'm very glad you said that. Um, Leah, summarizing is basically putting the whole ideas of the writing into your own words without worrying the order of the original writing. Uh, not quite. Um, it is, if we put it into our own words, that's paraphrasing. Um, we do want to keep the same order. In both summary and paraphrasing, it is important to keep the order of the original text, um, especially if it's some sort of instructional text or something like that. We can use paraphrasing in summarizing, yes. Um, the main point I wanted to make here is that summarizing is to take a big, long amount of information and say it in as few words as possible. That is summary. Summary is taking maybe a book and saying it in a few pages. Um, that is summary. Uh, paraphrasing is simply using your own words, but it can be the same length. So if we have one page of information, academic information, if I paraphrase, um, I might have a whole page, right? Maybe it's less, maybe it's even a little more, but it's, it's probably about the same length. If we summarize, it's not going to be a page long. It's going to be much shorter, maybe just a paragraph or less. Um, so you do use paraphrasing in summary, usually, but uh, they are different, so good job. Um, hello, uh, Jassim. Jassim, I think is how I pronounce it, right? Hello, how are you? Um, summary is the conclusion of the idea. Yeah, we usually keep the, the conclusion and the main idea in there. Um, if you summarize an academic paper, you will always talk about what the thesis is, the main point. Um, Jassim, uh, first time with us online. Awesome, we got two new first timers. So Jassim and uh, Julio, welcome. Awesome to have you here. Thank you for uh, joining our class, that's great. Um, okay, so we're gonna practice our note taking. So if you're a premium subscriber, you have access to this curricula, I'd like you to go ahead and go to the menu and exercise here. You can make a copy of it and take notes as we go along. It'll have the information and notes here for you. Um, we're translating our notes to a paragraph. For everyone else, um, if you're not a premium subscriber, go up earlier in the chat and you can check out the link and find out how to become one. Um, otherwise, just feel free to grab some note paper um, or use your, use your phone, just kinda, you know, text and take notes or type in another window. Um, and let's see if we can summarize and paraphrase some of this information, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and go back to our lesson and we're gonna listen to small, chunks of audio, just uh, two minutes or less, and we're going to try to identify the key information. For the first one, I wanna focus just on, actually for most of these, I just wanna focus on summary. So we're trying to um, give all of the most important information in a very short amount of space. So maybe one or two sentences. So take notes, write down what you think is most important, and then we will try to summarize the information together. Okay, so I'm gonna jump out again and we'll listen to this exercise right here. Number one. One interesting misconception about lions is that they are the kings of the jungle. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but Tarzan would never have met one. Lions don't live in jungles at all. They live on a savanna, which is a relatively flat, dry, grassy plain in parts of Africa. 
It's there that they find their prey, the animals that they systematically hunt and kill. The most common types of animals they'll target are quite large, such as zebras, antelope, and buffalo. Although the males are larger, at around 500 pounds and as much as 9 feet long, from nose to tail, it is the female that generally does the hunting. The females are closer to 300 pounds and 8 feet long. The male's role is to protect the pride. That is what a group of lions is called from other invading males. It's not so much that there is danger to the females and the cubs, but that another, perhaps younger and stronger male, might come in and try to drive the reigning male out. Okay, so there's a lot of information there, and um, we have to take in a lot of information all at once. So we're going to listen to that one more time. I want you to think about it, though. What is the most important information there? Now, when we summarize, of course, we are not going to be able to include all of the information, but we can choose what we feel is the most important information. So we're kind of trying to summarize this down into one or two sentences. Um, now, we, have, we are all of different skill levels, probably. So if, if you feel like you already know the summary, go ahead and write it in the chat, and then we'll talk about your guys' summaries later. Um, do it in one message, and try to do it in one sentence, maybe two sentences at most, okay? For those of you that feel you already have it down and you want more of a challenge, we're gonna listen again and I want you to come up with a summary, but I also want you to try to um, write down and take notes as to the um, size and weight, so length and weight of the male and female lines and see if you can get that information for me, okay? So that's your extra challenge. If you can't do that, no problem. Um, just focus on the summary, okay? So what is the most important information of this listening? We're gonna listen one more time. Number one. Number one. One interesting misconception about lions is that they are the kings of the jungle. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but Tarzan would never have met one. Lions don't live in jungles at all. They live on a savanna, which is a relatively flat, dry, grassy plain in parts of Africa. It's there that they find their prey, the animals that they systematically hunt and kill. The most common types of animals they'll target are quite large, such as zebras, antelope, and buffalo. Although the males are larger, at around 500 pounds and as much as 9 feet long, from nose to tail, it is the female that generally does the hunting. The females are closer to 300 pounds and 8 feet long. The male's role is to protect the pride. That is what a group of lions is called from other invading males. It's not so much that there is danger to the females and the cubs, but that another, perhaps younger and stronger male, might come in and try to drive the reigning male out. All right, so what do we get here? Um, great comments, everybody. Uh, I see that we have... Um, Comparison between lines, male and female, that's good. Um, but let's, let's keep uh, writing in some, some responses there and see what, um, what uh, information we have. Now about good, you, you were listening for the um, size of the male line. 500 pounds, nine feet long, very good. How about female, did you catch that also? How long and is a female line and how much do they weigh? Uh, three, ah, there you go, 300 pounds and eight feet long. You already had it put up. Good job. Uh, Selma, your summary, the lion isn't the king of the jungle because it doesn't live in a jungle and it doesn't do the hunting. It's the female that hunts. Uh, careful your spelling there on, on hunt. You wrote haunting. That's what a ghost does. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, hunt is spelled H-U-N-T. But otherwise, I love your summary. That's great. Yes, I would agree. Um, I would say that a good summary is pretty much exactly what Selma wrote there. Um, the, the main point of this listening is to dispel the misconception that the male lion is the king of the jungle. The important information I think that the speaker is trying to convey is the, 
the lion doesn't live in the jungle. It's the savanna, which is like a big grassy plain. Um, and male lions don't actually do the hunting. It's the female lions. The male lions don't really do anything ex except scare off other male lions. So it's to the main point of the listening, I would argue, academically, is to say that we all call the, the lion the king of the jungle, the male lion, but it's simply not true. Um, if anything, we would say the female lion is queen of the savanna. Um, okay, so, and Jorge, you, uh, you have some great commentary there too. The lion lives in the savanna, not the jungle. Yes, I think that's a very important part of that. Uh, Mahir, hello. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Um, and we have another new student too, it looks like. Clara. Clara, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. Um, I'm glad to hear it's your first class. We've had three new first-time students today. So Clara and Julio, who had to run off to, to school. He's taking classes at 5.30 at his time. Um, and then someone else, it's their first class, right? Uh, Jassim. Jassim, it's your first class. So welcome. So happy to have you guys. So to, to recap on what we're doing here, um, if this is your first class, we've been studying English for academic purposes, and we've been learning strategies for listening and reading. We've been talking about academic vocabulary, um, note-taking strategies, and how we might use that in academics or business fields. Um, so welcome. Masab, hello from Iraq. Welcome. Um, good to have you here. Um, happy to have you. And let's see, Jorge, it's your first class too? That's four? Awesome. Welcome. That's so cool. Glad to have you here. Um, all right. So we're, we're just practicing note taking and summary. So we're going to listen to another um, section here. It's a little bit longer. It's a minute 46. Um, and I'd like you guys to come up with a summary and type it. We're trying to make a summary in one or two sentences. So as you listen, try to take notes using some of the note-taking strategies we've talked about. If it's your first class, don't worry. All our other classes are recorded. You can go back and watch them, kind of catch up on what we've been studying. And then, uh, or if you don't want to do that, just jump in and we're going to start learning together. And we'll go on this week, next week. This class runs on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is is my time. Uh, Spokane, Washington, same time as in Seattle or Vancouver, BC or LA. Um, okay, Kyle, uh, lions aren't the common idea. They live in the savanna, not in the jungle. And the we wouldn't say the most difference, we'd say the biggest difference, superlative, biggest difference between the female lion and the male lion is that one hunts while the second one protects the pride. Um, yes, but I think you still have, that's very good, and that's very good paraphrasing. Your paraphrasing is awesome, Kyle. Um, I would say, though, that uh, you have a little bit of extra information there for summary. Um, to make it even smaller, I would say the main idea is lions live in the savanna, not the jungle. So good first start. And that the female lion does most of the work. You could keep it as simple as that. Um, if you want to be specific to the listening, you could say the female lion does all the hunting and feeding of the other lions. Um, but good job. I mean, it's awesome. I'm just trying to be a little bit critical so that we can continue to improve. But really, your, um, your summary and paraphrase, Kyle, awesome. Good job. Good work. Maher, uh, the lion is a patient animal. Yeah, you're right. We're going to move out of lions, though. Um, go home, watch The Lion King, learn about Simba and uh, Rafiki and all those cool uh, Swahili words. Um, we're going to move on to this guy and his horse, this uh, sleepy person and their horse. Uh, I don't know what the listening is about, actually. So let's listen together, try to take notes, and we'll summarize afterwards, okay? So pay attention, listen closely. Here it comes. Number two, of all the types of horses out there, one seems to stand above the rest in strength and endurance. 
Over a period of centuries in the Arabian Peninsula, the area we can find Saudi Arabia and other countries, animal breeders worked hard to create the perfect horse through selective breeding, and the result is what we call the Arabian horse. What makes this horse so much better than others? Well, it is superior in a number of ways. Most importantly, it's endurance because the bones of the Arabian are different in two specific ways. First off, they are extremely dense. That is, they are heavier and stronger than those of other horses without being any larger. What this means is that this horse has fewer problems with its legs when traveling over long distances. In 1919, the 300-mile endurance ride was held to put this to the test, with the first four of eight finishing horses being Arabian. It was found that only 15% of Arabians had mild to severe leg problems after the race, whereas up to 90% did among other breeds. The unique skeletal structure of the Arabian horse also explains its tireless endurance in that it actually has less bones than other horses. It has one less vertebra in its back and one less rib on each side. These two features make its back shorter and, therefore, much stronger and more able to carry a heavy load without tiring. Okay, so what would we say is the main idea there? What are we talking about and um, how could we summarize that information? Um, we can listen one more time because sometimes it's, it's difficult to get all of the information down if you're taking notes. Um, Luciana, this class starts at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so we only have about 10 minutes left today. Um, it is difficult to understand, Maher. That's why we're going to listen again. Um, it, it's pretty quick, and we get a lot of information all at once. Uh, Navat, good. Characteristics of an Arabian horse. That's the general idea. So now let's choose the most important information. We can go off of um, Navat's um, uh, general statement, the characteristics of an Arabian horse. That's perfect for a general statement. Let's talk about what the most important information is, and then I want to see some summary. So one or two sentences to try to take all the information we hear and put it into those one or two sentences. You guys ready? We're going to do it. You ready? Get your ears going. Get your notepads ready. Here we go. Number two. Number two. Of all the types of horses out there, one seems to stand above the rest in strength and endurance. Over a period of centuries in the Arabian Peninsula, the area we can find Saudi Arabia and other countries, animal breeders worked hard to create the perfect horse through selective breeding and the result is what we call the Arabian horse. What makes this horse so much better than others? Well, it is superior in a number of ways. Most importantly, it's endurance because the bones of the Arabian are different in two specific ways. First off, they are extremely dense. That is, they are heavier and stronger than those of other horses without being any larger. What this means is that this horse has fewer problems with its legs when traveling over long distances. In 1919, the 300-mile endurance ride was held to put this to the test, with the first four of eight finishing horses being Arabian. It was found that only 15% of Arabians had mild to severe leg problems after the race, whereas up to 90% did among other breeds. The unique skeletal structure of the Arabian horse also explains its tireless endurance in that it actually has less bones than other horses. It has one less vertebra in its back and one less rib on each side. These two features make its back shorter and therefore much stronger and more able to carry a heavy load without tiring. Okay, so good job, good comments there. Everybody's on the right track. Um, so we're talking about Arabian horses and why they are the best horse out there, right? They're better than all the other horses because, and you guys got this right perfectly. Um, I think someone was the first to write it, but 
The Arabian horse is the perfect horse because of its strong bones and its endurance. Yes, and the endurance is in part because of the strong bones. But yes, I would agree. That's perfect. Um, let's see here. Uh, Selma, you also said because of its strong bones. I agree. That's the main point, is that it's the best horse, but the why, the reason is because of its strong bones. Um, Let's see here, uh, Rosa, you also had a great comment there. Raving horses are excellent horses for riding with their endurance, um, extreme, be careful there, dance, I don't think you meant that, and strong bones. Um, maybe not dance, something else probably. Uh, but you're right, you hit the main point, strong bones, endurance. Um, let's see, their bones are dense and strong more than other horses, Jorge, good job. Um, Coyote, Arabian horses have strong bones, which make them able to carry big loads without getting tired too early. Great, another good, um, another good summary and, and paraphrasing. Uh, Romeas, oh sorry, Rom, Romeasa, Romeasa. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Arabian uh, horse tends to uh, stand above other horses because of its feature, like strength. Yes. Um, because of its bones, yes, uh, dense, exactly. So everybody is, um, everybody is doing great. You guys are doing wonderful. Um, and I think that's perfect. I took some notes here too, as we were listening. Um, does anyone know how long the race was? Just adding information here. Everybody did an amazing job of summary and paraphrase, by the way, good job. Um, but I want to quiz you on a couple other things for content. How long was the race? Uh, let me know in the chat there. Arabian horses are stronger without being larger. Navat, good point. Nobody's pointed that out yet. It said they actually have less bones too, which make them stronger. And I do agree. I think that's a good point. 300 miles, yes. How about um, they said uh, of the eight, eight finishing horses, right? So there were eight horses that finished. The top four were Arabians, right? Now, would you say that that is important information to include in our summary? Yes or no? I just want to take a quick survey. Do I have to include that? That four of eight horses were finishers uh, of this race, this 300 mile race were Arabian? Um, and is it important to include the number of miles for the race? If I only want to include summary, I only want to include the most important information, is it, is it really important that I include those things? So uh, Rosa says yes, Selma says yes, Navat says no, Maher says no. So we're really kind of all over the board there, right? Some say yes, some say no. I would argue that no, it is not important that we include how long the race was or four of eight horses finished first. If we simply say Arabian horses were bred to be the best horse because of their dense bones and their um, ability to travel long distances. Uh, you could say endurance, which is the same thing as ability to travel long distances. Um, Maher's got it, the details are not needed. 300 miles is a specific detail. If we're summarizing, we do have to cut out some of the specific details. Um, it's important we just state the facts. That's why a summary doesn't always have all the evidence. I would say the race, the four out of eight, and the 300 miles endurance, um, and uh, those sort of specific details are sort of moot. They don't really matter if we are giving the, the strongest information, the most important information, that Arabian horses are the strongest horse because of their dense bones. They have fewer bones, which allow them to have endurance, be stronger, and travel long distances. Um, now, if you do include that, it's not bad, and it's, it's a difficult question I asked there. But keep in mind, when we're summarizing, we just want to say um, the most important information and we leave out the details. We save those for later. That's for the full essay or presentation or lecture. So um, good job. And uh, uh, let's see here. It looks like Clara, um, you wanted more information about the school? Stick around. Um, I'm going to have a hangout with our... Uh, private, um, or excuse me, premium subscribers. 
Um, but when I end the stream, I'll give you that information really quick about how to become a premium subscriber. If you want to be um, a premium subscriber for this lesson, if you want to actually come here and study with us in person, uh, meet me, I can give you a high five, say what's up. Uh, I'll give you information on how to locate our school and apply to Spokane College of English Language if you want. Um, so, uh, we have about, how many minutes left of our lesson here? About eight minutes left. Um, we're gonna spend about three of those minutes doing one more uh, listening to try to summarize. And then the remainder of the class, I'm gonna go to a private hangout with our premium subscribers. So, um, one more listening. We're only going to listen to it one time, so listen very closely. And as you're listening, when it finishes, I'm gonna give you a couple extra minutes to, or a minute or so to write your summary. So try to write down only the most important information and then come up with a good one or two sentence summary, okay? Here we go. Number three. The salmon fishery is a huge industry for Western Canada. These big fish start out quite small as millions of eggs laid throughout the river systems in the interior. There are five main species along the Pacific coast, starting with the biggest, the Chinook, or king salmon, which can weigh in excess of 30 kilograms. These are highly sat after by sports fishermen, but can be quite difficult to find. After the Chinook, we get the coho, at up to 10 kilograms, quite different from the massive Chinook. These are big jumpers and are popular among fishermen and chefs alike. The next in size is the chum, which only gets up to around 8 kilos. These salmon are usually caught to be used for canned salmon. Sockeye salmon are by far the most highly prized and expensive of the species. They are found up to 4 kilograms, so are much smaller than the previous fish, but their flavor is superior. That's what you'll eat when you order sushi that has salmon in it. Finally, pink salmon, which are the smallest and usually grow to reach 2 kilograms, are the most abundant.
Okay, everybody, it is about that time. I'm sorry, I hate leaving you. I love this hour. I only get it twice a week, but I love it. Um, it's so much fun hanging out with you guys and talking about English and answering questions. Um, I know one of our premium subscribers wanted some uh, slang, so next class I'm probably gonna try to incorporate some more slang. So that'll be fun. Uh, tune in next Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, it goes for one hour. This is the end of the class. So if you're just showing up now, just show up exactly one hour earlier next Tuesday, okay? Um, Maher, good job. Uh, that's a great summary too. Um, so please come back. Come back next Tuesday. This class is on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, once again, I'm here in Spokane, Washington in the USA. Um, it's a beautiful little city and it's really affordable and, and fun to live in. So um, please, if you want to study English in the US, like send me an email. I can help you with it. Um, or if you want to join our Smart Live classes, you just go to the um, Smart Live page, which is uh, in the chat here. Posted it just a minute ago, but I'll put it up here on the main screen really quick so you can see it. Um, and that has information for our premium subscribers. Um, you get access to the courses on SMART, you get teacher marked assignments, you get quizzes um, and exams, and in the end you get an official SMART English certification. Um, and also you get private hangouts with your teachers. So uh, premium subscribers, hang out. I'm gonna request a hangout with you. Um, so if you're available and you want to, just answer and we can private chat about the lesson today or any other English questions you have. Um, we can talk about whatever you want. We can just practice English. I can teach you some slang, whatever you want. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining the class. You guys are great. Um, Luciana, I'm sorry you feel lost today. Just tune in a little bit earlier next week or watch the video. These are all saved on our YouTube channel. Um, you can check that out. And there are lots of other teachers. I'm not the only Smart Live teacher. We got uh, Mark, who's awesome. We got Sean up in Canada, he's rad. Nicole, she's so sweet and she's like a genius at grammar, she's so good. Um, we have Neil, who's super fun and goofy and uh, their classes are awesome. So check them out. You can uh, jump into any of the live classes. You can become a premium subscriber to any of the live classes. Um, it's really cool. So, um, okay, uh, I think I keep pronouncing your, your name wrong, um, but, oh, so it's like the Italian greeting. That's easy, ciao. It's ciao, right? Yeah, okay, awesome, I finally got it. It only took me three classes, ciao. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, uh, glad to see our return um, viewers. I mean, ciao, you're here every week. Rosa, you're of course here every week. Navat, you're here every week. Um, lots of people that I see again and again. Fatima, thank you. Selma, you guys are awesome. You're so much fun. And, um, and I love that you, you chat with each other. Uh, we kind of all get to become friends from all over the world. So really cool stuff. Um, no, it's not Chow. Oh, I'm never going to get it right. Oh my gosh. I'm going to keep working on it. I am. I'll get it right one of these days. Just become a premium subscriber and then we can private hang out and you can like yell at me a bunch for saying your name wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, Jorge, thank you for showing up. It was your first class, I think. And uh, Clara, um, I think it's Clara, right? Yeah, Clara, it was your first class. Welcome, thank you so much. And Julio's gone right now, but maybe he'll watch this video later. What's up, Julio? Good to have you. Um, so yeah, tell your friends, bring them on, um, have them log in. It's easier if they're logged in because they can chat on their own and I know that they're, um, you know, they're, they're a different student in there. If they're just hanging out in the room with you when you come onto the class, just say, hey, you know, it's Selma, I brought my, my friend, my sister, my brother, whatever, um, my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa, anybody you want to invite into this, bring it in. Because um, I love it, the more the merrier, it's great. Okay. Um, <laughs> you guys are wonderful. I do got to go though because I got to go to my private uh, hangouts with premium subscribers. But tune in next Tuesday. We'll be here for more lessons, more English fun. Check it out. 
Um, and of course, you can always email me in the off time if you have any questions. Joshua.live at smartenglish.com. You can also add me on Facebook. Um, my Facebook is facebook.com backslash smart Joshua live. Uh, that's S M R T Joshua, J O S H U A live, L I V E. So, um, you know what? I'll just copy and paste that into the chat. So, if you want, if you're Facebookers, um, I don't honestly check it that much. <laughs> I should check it more often, but um, email is the best way to, get, to reach me. So, uh, joshua.live at smartenglish.com. So thanks so much. Got to go. Have a great day, everybody.